Well, you know, one of the things that impacts me every time we have one of these or Jan and I are on the radio together or um, I, I'm traveling and I see these events unfolding and I see lawlessness increasing and, and the blasphemy increasing all around us. Um, this last week I was so overwhelmed. I, I literally was just overwhelmed. And so I went to a quiet place and I said, Lord, I can't take this anymore. And I said, what about the children? What about our grandchildren? What about my friends and their kids and, and our church family that we love so much? And all of you online, we love all of you. Listen, we pray for you. You're our family. And I was just reminded, Jesus reminded me, the Spirit of God reminded me of Genesis 6. Noah and his family living in wicked days. There was no church for them to go to. There was no fellowship. There was no online ministry. There was no great publishing house printing off books like we see from Jeff and Jan and able to read those things. Friends, they didn't even have the Bible that you have. And what are those famous words there that in the midst of all that wickedness that God saw that the thought of men's heart were only evil continuously? I mean, doesn't that almost describe our day exactly? And then God says, I'm, I'm fed up 120 years and then we get to that amazing verse, verse 8, and it says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And, and, and friends, the bottom line is this. The world is filled with wickedness. It's rebelling against God. The question is this. Have you found grace in the eyes of the Lord? I mean, it says Noah found grace in the eyes. He found God's favor. He couldn't earn it. He couldn't pay God back, but he experienced God's grace. And he experiencing God's grace, when you read Hebrews chapter 11, it resulted, it overflowed to his family, it overflowed to his children. And for 120 years, as a lone family, as an outpost of righteousness, preaching righteousness, they build the ark. And people are mocking them. You guys are a bunch of nuts, you're crazy. And though they tried to thwart the plan of God, the ark is completed after 120 years. And then those eight people, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I asked my grandson, what does it mean that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord? He found God's favor, but then how did it overflow? My grandson was thinking. I said, how about this? Did it overflow to his wife? Oh, yeah, Papa. Did it overflow to his sons? Oh, yeah, Papa. Oh, what about his, his daughter-in-laws? Oh, yeah, it flowed over them. What about the animals that were on the ark? It overflowed to them. Listen, grace is what was needed for that hour. And grace is what's needed for this hour. Friends, there's common grace. There was common grace that was given to that generation. For 120 years, God was patient. For 2,000 years, God has given out common grace. And throughout the scriptures, there's this, this constant reminder over these last 2,000 years. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Do you know what it says in Titus? That the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. Grace has appeared. Jesus Christ has appeared. He's come to seek and to save that which is lost. Friends, you and I don't have to go through the tribulations. We don't have to, we don't have to experience God's wrath in hell. We don't have to experience God's wrath here upon the earth. Instead, we can experience his grace. And my question to you is this. Will it be said of you, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Jan found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Sally found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Jeff found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Brian found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Sally found, is your name going to be written like that? It can be, and it can be tonight. You see, when you and I recognize our sin and that Jesus is the grace of God that has come so that we might have everlasting life and that he died as a substitute for our sins on that cross, if you will just simply put your trust in him, the grace of God will flood upon you, taking our sins away and transforming us from the children of wrath to the children of the living God. It'll be said of you, in these last days, that God's grace was upon you. What's keeping you from trusting Christ right now? 
I mean, think about it. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What did Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Tonight, you can come to the Father. Those of you online, you can come to the Father. You might be watching a month from now. Listen, you can come to the Father right now. You can experience the grace of God. Let it be said of you that grace came upon you. It's an amazing verse. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Religiosity won't get there, get, get you there. Um, good works on your part won't get you there. Helping little old ladies across the street. How many of you are little old ladies that need help? Right? I mean, that's not going to get you to heaven. But friends, Jesus can get you to heaven. And if you trust him tonight, you can have everlasting life. You can experience the grace of God. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The question is, will you experience God's grace? Why don't you trust him now? What does it mean to believe? It means to know some facts, that you're sinful and that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died on the cross. It's to give mental assent to that. Say, yes, there's a real Jesus, there's a real cross, there's a real resurrection. That's what the Bible describes. He's really resurrected, he really is the Son of God, he really is coming in glory, power, and majesty. And then there's that moment, let it be now, where you say, God, the best I know how, I trust Jesus and him alone to pay for my sins and have everlasting life. Will you do that right now? I'm going to pray. Why don't, you, why don't you just pray with me? Why don't you just join me tonight? Would you do that? Those of you online, would you join me tonight? Father, we are so thankful that Jesus has come, that we might experience your grace in this age, in this generation. And just as the ark was the only way of salvation in Noah's day, even so Jesus is the only ark, the only way of salvation God, I pray for each of my friends that each of them would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Maybe you feel the Spirit of God stirring your heart right now. Let me ask you a question. Do you know that you're sinful and that your sin separates you from God? Do you know that Jesus is the Son of God? He died on the cross to pay for sins. Do you know that God has declared him to be the Son of God by resurrection? And if you say yes to that, then let me ask you this. Will you right now trust in him. The best you know how, Jesus, and you can articulate it with these words if you'd like in your heart. Jesus, the best I know how, I trust in you. You died for sins. I trust that you died for my sins. The best I know how, I trust in you as the living Christ, the redeemer, my redeemer, my hope, and my salvation. Thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for giving me everlasting life. God, thank you for hearing our prayers and letting grace rest upon us in this generation. God, we love you for that, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.